Well, I'm not sure. About? I'm thinking we should rejoin the group. Why? Because they said not to leave the group. There's a secret room here somewhere. Well, maybe it's on the tour. Then it would suck as a secret room, wouldn't it? And how long has this room been a secret? Uh, the castle was built in the 15th century. So it's been a secret for maybe 600 years. Uh-huh. And you think we're going to find it today. I am optimistic. What's in the secret room? Seriously? Well, if you've heard there's a secret room, you must have heard rumors about what's in it. A monster, supposedly. The rightful heir to Glam's title and fortune. And this monster's been locked up for it. No one knows. Maybe 180 years? So it's a very old monster. Or a very dead one. The tour guide was about to show us some oil paintings of famous battles. You should feel free to rejoin that if hidden rooms and mythical creatures don't float your boat. Haven't we been walking down this corridor for kind of a long time? Huh. You see what I mean? Yeah. Freaky? Freak-ish. Should we go back? Nope. I think we should go back. I think we should see what's at the end of the corridor. There's a door at the end of the corridor. I can see it from here. A secret door? It looks just like a door. Who are you calling? I'm not. According to this, we're 30 meters outside the perimeter of the castle. Except we're not. Or are we? This is a second floor corridor. We're still inside, so unless they build a really big extension. 40 meters? All this old stone is throwing the GPS. It's not GPS. What is it, then? We're also not in 2018 anymore. What? We may be outside of time. 55 meters. What do you mean we're outside of time? Try the door. The secret door that's right here. The secret door that's 55 meters outside the castle and may be in another time dimension altogether. You have a really weird sense of humor. Don't I just? Try the door. It, it's not locked. It just goes outside. Great, let's have a look. Countryside. Very pretty. Does it look like Scotland to you? I've only been here three days. Okay, I want you to slowly turn around and tell me. Where's the castle? That wasn't slowly. What? Where's the door? We just came through a. Where's the door? I think this is the secret room. What? What? That doesn't. None of this makes. And that'll be the monster. Mythos by Julian Simpson. Episode 2. Glams. Ah, there you are, Mary. Excellent. Where's Hicks? Uh... There's a problem with Hicks, sir. What kind of problem? I don't know where he is. Well, when did you last see him? He's sitting next to me, about halfway up the M90. I was filling him in on the Glam's legend, and he was asking questions, but then he went quiet. I turned to look at him, and he wasn't there. The car was moving at the time? Quite quickly, yes. Hmm. Let's have a look. Ah, yes, Mr. Hicks is dead, I'm afraid. He passed away in London in 1643. The official record lists his cause of death as... Oh, that sounds like it hurt. One assumes he fell foul of the law. He got pulled back? You don't seem surprised. Not entirely. Chronological elasticity. You pulled him out of the 17th century, it pulled him back. But tell me he didn't have his phone on him this time. No, he was charging it in the car. Well, that's mercy. There must be a way we can... I'm afraid not. You see, at the point that he disappeared from your car, he could have been anywhere, and it would have been legitimate to expect that we might be able to bring him back. But that uncertainty collapsed about 15 seconds ago when I looked him up. He has now definitely been dead for 375 years. So, by looking him up... Yes, yes. Mr. Hicks was the metaphorical cat in the box, Schrodinger's podcaster. Can't be helped. Fortunately, we're not short-handed. Now, where are... Ah, here she is. Mary Blair, meet Cinderella Parker. Hi. Cinderella? It's temporary. Ms. Parker is a chaos magician. She's currently cycling through elemental magic. Last month I was Ether. Before that, Cordelia, which means daughter of the sea. Now I'm working with fire. Hence Cinderella. Yeah. Could I go in private, sir? No, Mary, you may not. 
I don't work with witches. Well, that's okay, because I don't work with obnoxious French nuns who've been dead for hundreds of years. <laughs> that's very good. Fire easy. <sighs> we should be getting on. Glam's is about an hour away and the clock is ticking. Why don't you two travel together and get better acquainted? Johnson bring you up to What's speed. What's your problem with witches? <laughs> What's your problem with nuns? I don't have a problem with nuns. I have a problem with you. I was engaged to Arjun Taleb. Ah. Uh, you were... Rebecca? When did you last see Arjun? Well, I don't get much of a chance. He thinks the world is being slowly digested in the bowels of a giant snake. Yes, but there's good reason. He worked with you for three weeks and lost his mind. All right. That's like the TLDL version, but... But least marks him out as one person to actually survive working with you. Technically, my last partner lived a long and productive life after Oh, we... well, where's, where's he now? Well, there was a whole thing to do with chronological elasticity, which I won't bore you with, but... He's been floating about as a ghost for 400 years. Of course you don't value anyone's life. Floating about? Beneath those wards, you're just a notion, a memory. All right, listen... I'm sorry about what happened to Arjun, and I'm sorry I haven't spent more time drinking tea with him and listening to him ranting about the great serpent and the end of the world. But I've been a bit busy saving real people from some pretty horrible things. That's what we're on our way to do now. So if you want to talk about that, it would seem like a better use of this time than you sulking about your ex. So tell me about Grams. Mm, that's the spirit. I mean, I might as well find out about where I'm going to die. Or go insane. Glam's Castle. The present building was built in the 17th century, but there's been a castle on the site since forever. It's where King Malcolm of Macbeth fame carved it. The salient point is that there's a secret room. Okay. Lots of different versions of what might be in there. A family called the Ogilvies apparently sought sanctuary in the castle and ended up getting bricked up and left to die. There's also stories about some monster born to the Glam's family way back, and it's kept out of sight there. Anyway, two American tourists found the secret room this morning. Their tour guide went looking for them and she opened the door but didn't go through. She said the room looked to be about 50 miles across and encompassed a forest and a mountain range. She's been sedated. So you're thinking it's a dimensional anomaly? I'm thinking anything until I see it. And the monster? Again, I wouldn't like to guess. But realistically, there's always a monster. This is Mr. Moorhead. He is our trusted contact at the castle. This is Mary Lair and Cinderella Parker. This is all rather unfortunate. This secret room, Mr. Moorhead. Oh. You're taking the lady? Eh? Well, it's either that or follow you to certain death. Is the room still accessible? It appears to be. It's on the second floor at the end of a corridor that's about five times longer than it was yesterday. It extends beyond the limits of the building? Yes. But that extension is not visible from the outside? It is not. I hate these. So you mentioned, without wishing to double down on your misery, Mr. Moorhead, the names of the two American tourists who have entered the room? Carlton Mann from Virginia. He was with a tour group that's been staying in a hotel down the road since yesterday. The tour guide tells us that the woman was not part of the group, however. She met Mr. Murray in the hotel bar last night. Her name is Elizabeth Ward. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Yes, I thought you'd enjoy that. Apparently, Ms. Ward is some kind of cryptozoologist. That's a fancy way of putting it. Libby Ward is a monster hunter. You're not in great shape, are you, Carl? I can run for my life as well as the next guy. Well, we'll see. Are you sure this is the way out? We're not trying to get out. We're trying to get to high ground so we can get a good look. At what? At what's coming after us. We're being tracked, Carl. We are? Well, I say we. Ah, I see what you mean. This corridor is unusually long. What's to stop it suddenly going back to normal? Absolutely nothing. And if it does that while we're inside the room? This is why I hate these jobs. I'm kitted out for tracking time-jumping witches in Essex. If I'd been able to see the quartermaster, I could have picked up a geodimensional beacon that might I have... I brought it with me. You don't think I'm about to attempt transdimensional travel without a return ticket? Wait a second. You're coming? Yes. I thought you'd be pleased. You're not field certified. You're not field certified, sir. I'd rather follow him into battle than you. <laughs> really? This man once destroyed the whole of humanity. Uh, in a parallel universe, Mary. I'm sure we've all done things in parallel universes we're not proud of. 
Shall we? Look, I know you're doing this whole elemental fire personality thing, but if there's a real person under there, could we call a truce for the duration of this? Why? Because there's something very nasty on the other side of that door, and she's hunting something equally unpleasant. This truce would involve trusting you. All right, let me be clear. Yes, I've lost everyone I ever worked with, and there's a decent chance you will not be the exception. And that's because you're a smart ass. There's only room for one smart ass on a mission like this. And I got here first. If you go where I go and do as I say, I will bring you back alive and sane. And the problem is, most people get to a certain point where they decide that whatever I'm telling them to do doesn't make sense, and so they start making decisions for themselves. And that's when they either die or go mad. I understand. Good. So, you're an egomaniacal dick who doesn't take responsibility for her own mistakes. Here we go, then. Ready? We're all going to die in there. Excellent. It's rather pretty. You're taking pictures? Oh, I'm too old to have an Instagram account now. Monster. Yeah. And the roar is not good. Why not? Because a roar is communication. (sighs) Well, or a warning. If it's on the trail of Libby Ward and her friend, and it's caught their scent, or... a bit closer to us. I don't like it here. Well, spare a thought for me. I have to go back on my own. Can you see anything? I don't even know what I'm looking for. If you see any movement at all. Uh, there's something there. Where? You see? Those trees there with the darker leaves. I don't know the names of trees. Right there? Yeah. But just below that. A little to the left. You see? I see it. What is it? It's not moving. It it looks like... It looks like a hole in the air. What is that? It's a hole in the air. This dimension's coming apart. What? Don't worry. It's a good thing. It means our monster is here. Do we know where we're going? Away from the monsters. We're heading for the river. Because? Because people build settlements on rivers. There are people here. The monsters haven't died of starvation, have they? Can anyone hear that humming? Yes. Yes, yeah, coming from over there. What is that? Where am I looking? Through those trees. Something shimmering in the air, like... It looks like a hole. It's not a good sign. Not a good sign of what? Ah, there we are. Let's park that discussion for later. Halt! Stand where you are. What is your business here? We need to speak with the Lady Vivian. We do? Identify yourselves. My name is Johnson. I am Lord of the White Hall. What the hell is going on? I have no idea. I'm Elaine of Corbinick, and this is Sir Miles of the Lord. With your permission, my lord, we'd be honoured to provide your escort. That's very kind of you. We have reports of bandits in the area today. Sounds nasty. Not to mention the monsters. Monsters? We heard them roaring at each other. You refer to the Ogilvies? They're the Ogilvies. Indeed, my lady. The Ogilvies being... Oh, I'm glad you paid attention in the briefing. Lead the way, officers. In 1486, the Second Lord Glams offered sanctuary to the Ogilvy family, who were fleeing some bloodthirsty rival clan. But Glams betrayed them. He hid them in a room and then had the place bricked up. It was assumed that the family starved to death, but their bodies have never been found. It seems that they passed into this realm and have been terrorizing the place ever since. So they're like 600 years old? Oh, probably not. Time works differently here. They may only have been here for a short while. Right, and and talking of here, you seem to know a lot about the place. Where are we? We're in Avalon. Avalon? As in King Arthur? Well, yes, although he died some time ago. And you know all this how? He's been here before. Which you would think he might have mentioned. So where do they think we're from? Uh, We keep that deliberately, Hazy. Let me do the talking. I should tell you that I'm mildly claustrophobic. Uh Uh-huh. Also, it's quite damp in here. My sinuses... Shh! What is it? Nothing. Just stop talking. 
Okay, I think it's dark enough here. What are we doing? We're making camp. How much further does this cave go? No idea. So we don't know what might be in here. This could be something's home. You have a very negative outlook. Do you find that works out for you in the long run? If you prepare for the worst, I found it seems less likely to happen. Okay, cool. And the worst case scenario here is that this cave is home to some spine-tingling, ravenous, flesh-eating beastie? That's what I'm afraid of. Great. So you're all prepped for that, which now makes it pretty unlikely, am I right? Try and get some sleep. Lord Whitehall. Lady Vivian. Why, you haven't aged a day. My lady is too kind. I've missed you. Oh, oh, oh. There will be a feast tonight in honor of our guests. And then afterwards... Oh. Who are these women? Uh, associates, mine, <clears throat> Mary Lair and Cinderella Parker. Cinderella's a pretty name. She could join us tonight, couldn't she? After the festivities. <laughs> no offense to you, Mary Lair, but I don't lie with ghosts. Oh, that's my loss, I'm sure. Sir Miles of the Lord isn't fussy, though. Are you, Sir Miles? Indeed not, my lady. Unfortunately, I'm afraid our business is urgent and we shan't be able to it stay. It wasn't a request. You'll stay for the feast. And there'll be no running off at first light this time. Now, what brings you to us? We're... Uh, we're tracking two individuals who appear to have stumbled through from our kingdom, accidentally... We're concerned that they may fall victim to the Ogilvies. The Ogilvies? <laughs> they said this to you. They did, my lady. <laughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. I... You didn't tell them. Oh, no, Lady Vivian, it seemed fire. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> we understand that the Ogilvies are something of a legend in your kingdom. Cannibals, is that right? You'll uh, have to explain the joke, I'm afraid. The Ogilvies aren't monsters, Lord Whitehall. I understand they're not much to look at, and they make quite a racket calling to each other. But there is no Silas Cows, and very strictly vegetarian. Ah, oh, terribly shy. The people you're looking for are in no danger from the Ogilvies, believe me. Then what else is out there? This is Avalon, my dear. Dragons. Ogres. Dragons? Well, with your permission, we'll see about tracking them down. By all means. Just make sure you're back by nightfall. Back and well scrubbed. Ooh. Lady Vivian. She's the lady of the lake, isn't she? Indeed. And you're... No, I am not. Well, it sounds like you're going to be. Parker, too. I don't mind. Well, I do. We're not staying. It sounds like you've stayed before. Is Mrs Johnson at where? Mrs Johnson is not to be brought into this conversation. There's a shot. This isn't real, none of it. Avalon is a folklore repository. What's that? There's a rich tapestry of British folklore. It's part of the cultural DNA. But it's not real. It's an alternate history, and it therefore can't exist in our world. Our reality filters these stories out into dimensions like this. These people think they're real, and within this dimension, I suppose they are. But affairs don't count with fictional characters. This subject is now off limits, Mary. All right, so back on topic, your girlfriend seems to think the Ogilvies are harmless. She's not my girlfriend. So why is Libby Ward hunting them? She's not. Whatever she's after, it's going to be far more dangerous. Why are we here? You're supposed to be sleeping, Carl. It's the middle of the afternoon. Sleep. I need you to be up and about when it gets dark outside. Why? Oh, it's so boring having to explain everything, Carl. You haven't explained anything. Fine. I've been hired to trap a very rare, very dangerous monster in an alternate dimension. Happy? But do I look happy? I don't know, it's dark. I'm imagining you with a contented smile on your face. Well, that's not what I have. I want to know what we're doing here. And I just told you. The real reason. Did, did you just walk through a secret door in Glam's castle and end up in another world? Well, that's what it seems like. So what do you think? Is it a hallucination? Is it a dream? 
Are you dreaming right now, Carl? I don't think so. There you go, then. Well, then what am I doing here? Have you ever been hunting, Carl? When I was a kid, my uncle took me. He lived up in the forest. Just a yes or no is fine. Yes, I have been hunting. All right, then you know you need some bait to lure the thing that you're hunting to where you need it to be. Well, we were hunting deer, so... You're familiar with the concept of bait? Yes, I am. You're the bait, Carl. You're not serious. Okay. If you're a hunter, where's your gun? I'm trapping it, not killing it. Trapping it in what? That might be too much for your tiny little mind to handle. <laughs> if you're serious about this, I and mean, you really think I'm just going to sit still... You can or... sit, stand, run around screaming. It doesn't matter at this stage. You're here. That's all I need from you. And when whatever it is comes for me? Yeah. I spring into action. And what if it gets to me first? Hello? Oh, sorry. It's dark. You can't see me shrugging. How are we doing, Cinderella? We're heading in the right direction. She's running enchantments. Just a simple tracking spell. Sir, there are protocols governing magical use in unknown realms. Yes, I wrote them. Miss Parker's spell is a simple class one incantation for the discovery of carbon-based life forms, augmented to highlight those who have recently ingested processed cheese. A tweak, you see... Tags Americans. Yeah, I get it. But I don't need to remind you what happened in a well-known Swedish furniture store when Gerard ran a charm to find a direct route to the canteen. Well, you should have known better. The layout of those places is governed by Norse dimensional magic. The conflict should have been... What happened to Gerhard? Well, he got sucked into a seventh dimensional junction between bedrooms and kitchenware that turned him inside out and sprayed him all over a modular sofa. He'd only gone in for the meatballs. Your point about using magic under non-local, unknown circumstances is well taken, Mary, but I have every confidence in Cinderella's... There's that hum again. Miss Parker, if we could banish the enchantment... What is that? It does look like a hole. It's a rip in the membrane that separates Avalon from our reality. Oh, good. Interesting. What hashtag are you going to give that one? If you stand here, you can see right through it. Well, that's the castle car park, isn't it? And that's... And wait a second, is that me? It is. Heading out to the car and me beside you. As I said before, the temporal relationship between our world and Avalon is slippery. We haven't done this walk yet, so this must be the future. And if we were to climb through the hole? Catastrophic, don't do that. Where am I? That's an interesting question. Why is it interesting? It's interesting because I suspect these tears in Avalon's fabric are a new phenomenon. One that dates to your arrival. And how are we justifying that logical leap? Ball Rectory, Mary, your alma mater, the most haunted house in Britain. You're as much a part of the folklore as anything in Avalon, and yet you exist in our world too. You represent a link between the two worlds, and your presence here may be bringing the barriers down. You got all this from me not walking across a car park in the future? I, I might have just nipped to the loo. Shh, he's close. The American? I thought you'd shut down the magic. I did. I can hear him. All right, you two wait here. Where are you going? Grab the yank. This is impetuous. It could be a trap. Well, impetuous is how I get results. What about the monster? It's not the monster, is it? It's the American. I'm going to grab him, then we can go. Unless you'd rather sit around and talk strategy while the universe collapses around our ears. Oh, so this is where you put the lives of everyone else Listen, in death. Cinders, you remember I said there always comes a time when someone doesn't want to do as they're told, and that's what gets them killed. This is one of those times. So if you don't want to be another one of the tortured faces I see when I wake up screaming at four in the morning, wait here. Mary, Mary. Back in a minute. Impetuous. It's instinct, mate. Finally honed instinct. I've been battling beasties for four centuries before you were even born. Carlton Murray? Are you human? It depends who's asking. Who are you? Mary Lair. I'm here to rescue you. I've got your R2 unit. I'm here with Ben Kenobi. How did you find me? Processed cheese, believe it or not. Magically speaking, it's a, it's a fairly foolproof way of tracking Americans. You've got to be quiet. There's something else here. 
What kind of something else? I don't know. Where's Libby Ward? I don't know that either. I escaped. We were in a cave. I was supposed to stay in there. She said I was bait. Uh-huh. Bait for what? The big bad. Monsters walk the earth, Carl. And people like me hunt those monsters. Why? For money. Why does anyone do anything? People want trophies. Aren't those meant to be from things you've hunted yourself? Sure, but some things require a specialist. Some monsters are too hard to find or too difficult to trap. Some things are just too damn dangerous to go up against if you don't have the requisite skills. And this is one of those. Sure is. One of a kind. Maybe the high point of my career, if I'm honest. And this is worth killing a complete stranger for. It actually is. But I really don't think it's going to come to that, Carl. I think you'll be back at that crappy little hotel tomorrow, telling tales of your adventures to the rest of your dorky tour group. Although, I'd be prepared for them not to believe you. And you're going to trap this thing? I am. Too hard to kill. And the price goes down if my client can't play with his present. What are you going to trap it with? This. It looks like a snow globe. So this thing is tiny? Oh, no, it's person-sized. The trap is something that used to be called a banishment. It probably works using some kind of quantum entanglement, but who really understands that? It'll work, though. Now you really need to sleep, Carl. You expect me to sleep under these conditions? <laughs> She was gone. Gone where? No idea. But I got the hell out of there. Smart move, Carl. What did this trap of hers look like? I have it. She left it behind. Really? Here. It's glowing. Was it glowing before? And was it making that noise? Carl? Look at it. I'm looking. Why is it... Oh, this is weird. I'm sorry. She didn't knock you out. Did she call? I'm going to bloody knock you out! Is it getting bigger, do you think? The hole? I shouldn't think so. If the membrane is disintegrating, it's more likely that other holes are appearing rather than this one is getting bigger. I'm not happy waiting here. How long are we going to give her? Mary's terribly capable, you know. I have issues. Relating to Arjun Taleb? What happened to Arjun It was, was Lair's fault. <sighs> yes, it was. She should have let him die. Excuse me? The version you've heard is that Mary and Arjun were tasked to investigate an anomaly that had come to light around an old druid site on Lindisfarne. These particular druids had worshipped a giant snake god and that somehow got woken up and Arjun saw it and went mad. She let him go in there alone. Well, that's the thing, you see. Mary specifically told him not to go in there. Arjun had some rather old-fashioned ideas about women not facing danger alone, so he followed her into the shrine. I read the report. This is not Mary what it... should have sealed the shrine and left Arjun to his fate. Instead, her determination to rescue Mr. Taleb very nearly led to a large section of the northeast coast being devoured. That version is not in the report that I signed off because I need Mary on this team and her position would have been untenable. I if... asked her directly about... Why didn't she just... Because Mary functions best in adversity. We have to go find her. No, we oh, have my... to do as she said. <laughs> well, Carlton Murray, I presume. Are you alone? Where's Mary? Who? Who? I haven't seen anyone. Where is Libby Ward? I don't. I escaped from her. She knocked me out. When I woke up, she was gone. Please, it's tracking me. Get me out of here. Take him back. I'll stay and find Mary. Yeah, it's not quite as easy as that. We have one geodimensional beacon. If we don't all use it together, there's a good chance the entrance to this dimension will have vanished when we get back. Then we all go after Mary. No, please. I don't think so. What? Why? Because we saw the future through that reality tear, didn't we? And Mary Lair wasn't in it. Hello, Libby. How's it going? Not well, if I'm honest. Yeah, huh? Is this a banishment? Uh, well, kind of. 
As I understand it, the old school banishments just took entities like you and blasted them out into wherever. Yeah, it's quantum entanglement. You get ripped into your constituent particles and they all ping to wherever in the universe their paired partners are. Apparently it stings quite a bit. Is that right? Way over my head, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm told this thing's been modified for containment, not dispersal. Schrodinger again. As long as we're in this box, we're in a quantum superstate. You're good on this stuff, huh? I've been around for 400 years. That's a lot of reading time. So, this terrifying monster you were tracking. I appreciate you don't think of yourself that way. But to the rest of the world... And you brought Carlton in here as bait. Because who cares if I go jaunting off into another dimension, right? But your people get word that I've taken some poor schmo with me. And they send in their best and their brightest. Who's the client? I call Branfield. He's a collector over in the Pacific Northwest. Mm. And so now, Cotton Murray finds my colleagues, does his scared act. Well, that's not an act. And they take him back to Glam's castle, whereupon you jump out of here somehow, leaving me trapped, and then you deliver the banishment with me inside to your collector in America. That's the master plan. It's not bad. There's one flaw that I can see straight off. No one's bothered at it. You seem to have skimmed over the bit where I rip out your soul and tear it into little pieces. Oh, I knew there was something. Oh, no, wait, I did think of that. That's right. What was it now? Oh, yeah. I'm the only person who can get you out of here. Anything happens to me, and you're stuck in here for eternity. So why don't you sit down like a good little monster, Mary Lair, and behave yourself? You really think she's gone? I learned long ago not to rule anything out where Mary is concerned. But I don't think it's prudent for us to stay here when Mary's fate is unknown and this dimension is coming apart at the seams. Uh, this course of action also has the virtue of being very me, which means that if Mary is still around, she will anticipate it and act accordingly. But what if the future we saw wasn't certain? What if it was just a possible outcome or we interpreted it wrong? It's all possible, but we have to apply Occam's razor Mary has gone off to battle a monster hunter and quite probably the monster she's hunting. In the future we glimpsed, she wasn't there. Ergo, she doesn't make it. But that future may be taking into account the likelihood that you would do what you're doing and make us all go back without her. That is true. I just want to get out of here. Oh, shut up, Carl. No, no, I will not shut up. My name is Colton Murray. I am a citizen of the United States of America. You have a duty of care towards me that prohibits... Actually, we don't. Diplomatic treaties don't extend across the esoteric services. We could let an elder god feast on your brains, Mr. Murray, and your government would have no recourse. Not that an elder god would get much sustenance from a brain fueled by game shows and processed cheese. Miss Parker, there's no call to insult. Why is it with you people and processed cheese? You people? It's a figure of speech. No, it isn't. Someone else has been discussing your poor dietary habits. <sighs> I don't know what you... I'm upset and maybe I overreacted. Mr. Murray, I think it's time you told us what is really going on here. We should be back in the real world any time now. The real world? Where do you think we were before? Great. Here comes another pseudoscience lecture. The whole real, unreal thing is completely redundant as a method of classification. I'm a 400-year-old ghost rendered corporeal by a mind-bogglingly complex series of Enochian wards. You hunt monsters for a living... And we're both suspended in a quantum superstate inside a piece of 2,000-year-old occult technology within a chronologically divergent folklore repository that may or may not be disintegrating simply because I'm in it. And you want to start breaking things down into real and unreal? Sorry, I drifted off towards the end there. You want me to tell you where you went wrong? Sure. It's always worth getting notes from the helpless abductee on how the abduction could have gone better. You think this is your story? History's written by the winners. See... Everyone thinks they're the hero of their own story. So, in your story, I'm the big bad monster and you've cleverly trapped me in here and maybe there'll be some bumps along the way between now and you delivering me to your collector, but there'll be Act 2 problems and therefore you think it's ultimately surmountable. If it's my story, then I'm in the all is lost section of the narrative and it's touch and go, but I'm, I'm probably going to make it because I'm the hero and that's how it goes. But this isn't either of our stories. What are you even talking about? This is the story of Cinderella Parker. And it's in Act 3 for her, which means all the solutions to the problems have already been seeded in Act 1. You know someone called Cinderella? I know. It's silly. Cinderella is a chaos witch. She used to go out with this guy called Arjun Taleb. 
Long story short, Arjun comes face to face with an ancient Caledonian serpent god and went permanently tonto. And Cinderella has been laboring under the impression that this was all my fault. So in act one of her story, Cinderella Parker is partnered with the person she holds responsible for her ex-boyfriend going mad. So then all this happens and I disappear and Cinderella is probably very happy to see the back of me. However, this is now the end of act two for her wherein she finds out the truth about Arjun's descent into madness. So now she's feeling really bad about how she treated me, and she's looking to make a bold Act 3 rescue attempt. You hope? No, I know, because Avalon is a folklore repository. It runs on narrative, and the forces that control this dimension mould events to best fit classical narrative structure. Cinderella Parker is the hero here, and you're the villain. And you really, really don't want to be the baddie in a Cinderella Parker story. It feels like it's burning, doesn't it? Like every skin cell on your whole body is on fire. There's actually no damage being done, Carl. It's all in your mind. But how come, even though you know that, it doesn't stop it hurting? Please what, Carl? Make it stop. No. Tell us how to open the banishment. I don't know. What did you have to do to trap Mary Lair? Nothing. Nothing. I just showed it to her. So it was pre-programmed to trigger for her. Interesting. Is it? Could you make him be quiet for a moment? I need to think. Shh. Enjoy it while it lasts, Carl. Because next I'm going to flash fry you. Your testicles. How's the thinking going, sir? Mm, so, so. Well, let me cut it short for you. I'm not leaving. Excuse me? I'm not leaving here without Mary. I outrank you, Miss Parker, and if I, I say you... I don't care. Throw me out of the department. Send me to prison. I'm not leaving without her. What are you trying... No. Look. You see? Mary's with us in the car park now. Your determination not to leave without her... ...means there's a future where she survives. Mm. Now, if this banishment will only open for Mary, and our Mary is trapped inside it... You're wondering if it'll open for that Mary. Once it's triggered, I can hold it open. But that isn't you. That's a future version of you. Yes, but branching off from this point in time, what I know, she knows. How's your throwing arm, sir? Oh, I was silly mid-off for Hampshire under 18. Well, I don't know what that means, but... Watch and learn, Miss Parker. Well, Mr. Moorhead, with the secret door closed now, I don't imagine you'll have any more trouble with missing tourists. I obviously have questions. Naturally. Unfortunately, you're not cleared for the answers. Suffice to say, it was interesting and messy. So messy. I'm chucking these clothes away. I'm burning mine. I'm not sure that's very fair on the planet. What's that? Let's see. It's glowing. another me behind you. What? All right. And this is Cinderella Parker, the hero of our tale. You recall me mentioning she was going to give you a very bad time. Didn't I already kill her once? I'm not sure what's going on here. I have a vague sense I'm meant to be holding this door open. It's a puzzle, isn't it? What the hell is going on? All right, let's work backwards. Two of me means it's a chronological mismatch, which would be catastrophic, except that we're in a sealed quantum containment field. Other me, you'd come out of the Avalon dimension and were walking across the car park. Yeah, it turned out Libby here was hunting us, which was a textbook example of biting off more than you can chew. Cinder's turned her into a pile of ash. What the hell? We're friends now, are we? We're working on it. I am sorry about Arjun. We already did this. Fair enough. So, now there's two chronologies, and Johnson seems to have crossed the streams to get one to help out the other. Which means one chronology has to collapse. Presumably that's ours. Do you think you can just confuse me into letting you go? It is all a bit bewildering, isn't it? Here's the simple version. I'm trapped in this banishment with you. My colleagues have figured that out, and they've realised that the banishment was triggered to open when it detected me, right? Yes. So, Johnson and Parker have tossed the banishment through a hole into an alternate future where it has detected alternate me, 
and opened up. And so now alternate Cinderella is kicking the door open long enough for me to explain the whole bloody plot to you. I can't hold it much longer. Wants to stop me walking out of here. Me? Well, yes. Cinderella will incinerate you if you try. But more than that, you're already dead in this reality. So if you step outside the door, you cease to exist. But there are two of you here. Yes. Only one of us can leave the banishment. And it has to be you. It does. Because when I step out, this alternate reality collapses back into direct continuity from where I left off. Which means alternate me and alternate Parker also cease to exist. And you're stuck in here, all on your lonesome, until we get you back to the department. <sighs> Poor Libby. You thought this was just a simple hunt, didn't you? You underestimated Mary Lair. Oh, not at all. This was always your story, Cinders. You'd let these people die just to trap me. Oh, totally. I'm a monster, remember? I'm actually okay with it. Me too. If other me hasn't ruined her dress killing you, I'd far rather she got to move on to the future. Who are you people? We're the things that go bump in the night, love. You thought you were hunting a monster? We're who monsters warn their kids about. Door's closing. I'll see you back at base, Libby. I'll make sure your prison cell gets pride of place on my mantelpiece. Thanks, chaps. Not a problem. Hey, say hello to me for me. Oh, and let me know that we've decided to do Earth next, after fire. Mind how you go. There it is. Hello. Are you okay? Can someone else pick that banishment up? I don't want to accidentally trigger it again. All back to normal in there? Yeah, the door's closed. The castle has returned to its normal shape. Excellent. Where's Carl? Back with his tour group. I put him on the phone to Miranda Hyde and she's wiped his short-term memory. I think he should be doing time. Well, he was coerced. He wasn't very difficult to coerce, though, was he? I did suggest Miranda might want to seed a few rather unpleasant nightmares in Mr. Murray's subconscious. Uh, well, that's something, I suppose. We heading off? Yeah, we're going to find a little chef. I'm starving. All right, I'm going to nip to the loo. I'll catch you up at the car. Oh, and Cinderella. Alternate future you wanted me to tell you it's Earth next. Oh, thanks. She's gone to the loo. She's gone to the loo? Yes. When we first saw the future and she wasn't there, we were in this position. There, were, there was a red car right there, like this one, and she wasn't with us, and she said maybe she'd just gone to the loo. Oh. So she wasn't dead anyway. Well, there's no way to know. Yeah, but... In this version of the present, she's gone to the toilet. In the version we saw then, she may have been dead. It's uncertainty, Cinderella. A decision has been made and all the possible realities have collapsed into this one. But that may not be the one we saw. I like this job. And it's not Cinderella anymore. I'm thinking Hermione. From the Greek, yes. It's very good. Very earthy. I'm looking forward to being more grounded, less angry. Well, good luck with that. I've decided to partner you with Mary for the foreseeable future. What? Now, now, not fiery Cinderella anymore. Hermione, remember? Stony, calm Hermione. In Glams by Julian Simpson. Lair was played by Nicola Walker. Parker by Phoebe Fox. Johnson, Tim McInerney. Libby, Jana Carpenter. Carlton, Ewan Bailey. Moorhead, David Holt. Lady Vivian, Beverly Klein, and Lady Elaine, Becky Wright. All other parts were played by members of the cast. The director was Julian Simpson. The producer, Karen Rose. Mythos was a Sweet Talk production for BBC Radio 4.